and rural development. Mamu Nyamza, Mamu Kakaza, do you have any apologies for us today? Morning, Chair. Morning, everybody. Yes, Chair, we've got, we've got only one apology from Uma Mumpata, is attending the peaceful environment. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. On my side. Uh, Thank you. My Nyamza. Uma Nyamza, Chair, I think is not, is not yet connected. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll check. Uh, Honorable Minister. Chairperson, thank you. I would request to leave at 10. I'm actually inaugurating the new board of the OPP at 10 o'clock. It's their first meeting. All right. Thank you uh, for uh, raising that, Honorable Minister. Any other apologies? Honorable members, let me take uh, this opportunity to welcome you all on our meeting, our Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Also, let me uh, welcome uh, the uh, Minister, the Executive, um, as well as uh, the officials of the department that have joined us uh, today. Uh, this meeting is a follow-up uh, meeting on discussions held on the 11th of February 2020, where the Committee on Agricultural and Reform and Rural Development sought to be briefed about the implementation of court orders. Today, we will limit ourselves to two of these cases, that being the Mwelase and others versus the DG for the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. And another would be Speaker of the National Assembly and another versus the Land Access Movement of South Africa and others. The court in the Mwelase matter ordered an employment of the special master of labor tenants for a five years whose mandate is to prepare and submit to court the implementation plan. After this approval by the court, the special master's role is to supervise, monitor and oversee the functions of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development with regard to the implementation of the Labor Tenants Claims Resolution Program. In February of this year, the Special Master of Labor and Tenants, Professor Richard Levine, had just started and the plan was not yet in place. Today, we invited the Minister, Mamuti Deza and the Department to brief the portfolio committee about the implementation plan and progress report, its operationalization to date. The second brief honorable members is from the Commission on Restitution of Land Rights, which also deals with implementation of the court order in the La Mosa matter. In March 2019, the Constitutional Court ordered that the Chief Land Claims Commissioner must file a report with the Land Claims Court at six monthly intervals. The report ought to set out, amongst others, the following. The number of outstanding old claims in each of the regions on the basis of which the Commission's administration is structured. For this item, the Commission will also present the status report on Project Kuyasa. The anticipated date of completion in each region of the processing of the old claims, including short term targets for the number of old claims to be processed. 
the nature of any constraints, whether budgetary or otherwise, faced by the Commission in meeting its anticipated completion date and the solution that have been implemented or under consideration for addressing the constraints. These court orders, honorable members, point to one thing, that is the portfolio committee must enhance its oversight on how the department and its entities implement legislation. If this portfolio committee conducts its oversight with true diligence and the department's implementation implements legislation in a manner required, there would be no need for courts to oversee the work of this department. We must therefore, honorable members, commend the department, the special master of labor and tenants and the chief land claims commissioner for a detailed plan and reports that they submitted. If the department and the commission could make it a norm to ensure that PowerPoint presentations are accompanied by narrative reports, parliamentary oversight will be enhanced. Honorable members, I therefore want to invite the department to present their first presentation so that we may be able to proceed with the program of the day. Honorable Minister, you wish to have opening words? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, uh, Honorable Mandela, the members of the Portfolio Committee, the Deputy Ministers, as well as the Senior Official of the Department and the Land Claims Commission. I just want to make opening remarks and appreciate the time that has been given by the committee to indicate how far we've gone in the implementing of the court um, judgments that were given to the department in respect of the two matters. I will start with the one on Mwelase, um, which relates to the uh, labor tenants. As the chairperson have indicated, there was a particular process that the court had to follow in consultation with the people who had taken us to court on how the special master would be appointed. That process was concluded last year and the special master, Mr. Lavin, Richard Lavin, was appointed. And after his appointment, we assisted the office of the special master to set up the office so that he can start his work in terms of what the court had requested. He further requested that he actually visit the various provinces, particularly those provinces that uh, had a number of labor tenants claim and that was facilitated. After which the special master worked with the department to look at the capacity that is there in the department to execute this claim. We have identified 93 officials who would actually be dedicated in working with the special master to make sure that we actually execute the court order as it was envisaged. We further had a meeting with the Minister of Justice as well as Judge Mir to make sure that there is alignment in terms of how the special master will report to the court as expected, but also deal with matters that might be unintended consequences given that it is the first time that we have such a situation in our jurisprudence. The present now is the plan that has been uh, worked by the special master on how the supervision role will be executed and the plan of implementing will be done. With regards to the commission, Indeed, as the Lamusa uh, judgment indicated on a six monthly basis, the commission has been doing its report. But they first looked and analyzed all the remaining claims in detail the region and also look at how best we can resolve those. I just want to indicate that one of the constraints has been the 
capacity in the office of the Valuer General, which has actually created a bit of a bottleneck in terms of how quick the process can be undertaken. But we actually worked and looked at the interim measures that can be utilized so that the commission's work is not stalled. The other matter which the commission will talk to is the challenge that we're having on the research capacity, which we have agreed we needed to improve. Because if the research of the claims is not of good quality and standard, it does actually create contestation amongst parties when we seek to do an administrative uh, settlement of such claims. I will then ask the department to give with the detail of uh, the two matters, Chairperson. I just thought I will need to give that overview on where matters are. Thank you so much. Tamim Donso will be the one on behalf of the, or I will hand over to the acting DG who will then indicate to us how the presentations will be done. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister, um, Honorable Chair, um, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, um, our Deputy Minister uh, colleagues who are on the platform. Um, we have, and I, I need to make that introduction, um, Minister, that um, we, we had adjusted the presentation that we are going to make on the uh, Labour Tenants Implementation Plan. The initial presentation that we had made um, uh, was too detailed and was too concentrating in terms of history. We thought that we should shape it, um, but it does not change the essence in terms of the delivery that we'll be making today. And at that time, um, Donzo will be taking us through the presentation on the labor tenants uh, implementation. That's the first presentation that we'll have. Uh, and the second presentation would be done uh, by the commission. And um, Menon Fudo Bogoto will take us through that presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. And um, thank you very much, Honorable Chair, for the uh, opportunity. Thank you, um, Etting DG. Uh, good morning, uh, honorable members. Good morning, minister and deputy minister. Um, <clears throat> we will be taking the committee through um, an overview of the labor tenants implementation plan and to provide progress with um, the implementation of uh, that plan. Um, in terms of, in terms of um, the, the outline, we will uh, just touch a little on the special- My apologies uh, about, um, please uh, switch on your video. We do have uh, people uh, following the proceedings of the committee from other platforms and social media, and they would uh, want to follow as you present. So please uh, switch on your, your video. Thank you. So um, the, the first item is uh, what uh, the Honorable Chairperson has already indicated, uh, the mandate of the Special Master of Labor Tenants. Um, the second item is going to be the elements of the plan, uh, the implementation strategy for the plan, uh, risks that are strategic, which we have identified, and then lastly, touch on progress that we have made in implementing um, this, this plan. So on, on the third slide, uh, we, we, we then set out what the mandate of the Office of the Special Master of Labor Tenants is. And as the, the Honorable Chairperson has already indicated, it is to supervise, to monitor, and to oversee the functions of the department insofar as they relate to the resolutions of the outstanding labor tenant applications. The land claims court in its order that ordered uh, that a, labor, a, a special master be appointed indicated what elements should be included uh, in the, in the um, um, implementation plan. And those elements are as follows. Um, the court wanted the plan to set out the total number of applications that were lodged, um, the number which have not yet uh, been uh, processed and finalized. It also wanted uh, the plan to deal with uh, the skills and infrastructure that is available uh, in the department for the processing of the applications. 
it required that targets on a year-to-year -year basis be set, that a budget that is necessary uh, per financial year be uh, indicated, and that plans for coordination with the courts be set out, and that um, any other matter that the special ma master may consider relevant to also be included in, in the plan. In this, sum, in this slide, we then summarize um, the response, uh, how the plan responds to those elements that have been indicated. There are 20,325 labor tenants applications that were submitted. There are 9,333 that are outstanding. And uh, the department is in the process of procuring a, da a database soft software as the special master has uh, requested to be used uh, to house the statistical information and to be used as a, a reporting tool. In so far as targets are concerned, um, the target for the current financial year is 500 labor tenant applications. Um, the target uh, for the 2021-2022 financial year is 1,500 applications. It grows to 2,000 applications. And so far, we are looking at um, approximately 2,500 applications for 2023-2024. The Land Claims Court has given the department and the special master a five-year period to finalize the outstanding uh, labor tenant applications with the deadline of uh, 31 December uh, 2025. As the minister has indicated in her opening remarks, um, there are 93 officials in the department that are working on labor tenants issues. The special master is currently finalizing a, a skills assessment a process to identify gaps, and he will then make recommendations uh, to the department to indicate whether uh, these 93 officials, how can they be best used in order uh, for, for, for the department to achieve uh, and, and to deliver on this plan. In so far as uh, the budget is concerned, through the medium term expenditure framework, uh, 150 million has been allocated for this work uh, for the current financial year. This money was not affected by the budget adjustments that were made as the country responded uh, to the COVID pandemic. 219.4 uh, million is budgeted as an indicative budget uh, for 2021 and 2022. And in 2022, 2023, uh, 222 uh, million uh, has, been, has, been, has been budgeted. Um, National Treasury and government as a whole is currently uh, finalizing uh, the MTF processes, where after we will then know what uh, the indicative budget for 2023-2024 will be. In so far as coordination with the court is concerned, um, the, 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 the plan makes provision for the special master to report to the court on, on, on a quarterly basis and uh, there has been agreement between the special master and the court as to uh, the, the, the format of that um, report. This slide uh, sets out um, the breakdown of the applications to be processed. Um, as we indicated earlier, there's 20,325 applications, 9,333 of them are outstanding, and uh, we currently have 101 court cases that are currently pending in court. This number of cases pending in, 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 in court is going to be increasing. There are, there are cases that we are currently processing, uh, particularly in Bumalanga, where alternative dispute resolution mechanisms have not um, uh, uh, led to the resolutions of those applications. And we are currently preparing um, uh, the referrals of those applications to court as uh, the law required. In terms of our strategy for implementation, there is a seven step um, route map that the implementation plan sets out. Um, the first step uh, was to establish a result oriented governance framework. Um, that work has already been done. Um, the second step was the institutionalization of scientific project management discipline. The special master is, uh, together with the national office, as the minister indicated, um, visiting um, again uh, provinces, this time around to, 
to, to, to, to take provinces and officials that are doing work in this area uh, through the implementation plan and uh, institutionalizing project management in the work um, of, of processing labor tenant uh, applications. There was a need as part of step three to reaffirm the objectives of the progress that when labor tenants submitted applications, it was for them to be provided with a uh, secure land tenure and for them to be assisted to develop uh, that land. So as we are processing these applications, we are not doing that just for the sake of uh, complying with an order of court, but we are doing it as government's broader program uh, of a, a, a tenure reform and uh, addressing a, a, a tenure insecurity that is currently taking place in commercial farming areas. Um, we, 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 we then made provision in step four of the plan for the establishment of a, an implementation strategy. And this is the strategy that uh, we, are, we are presenting as part of the implementation plan today. Step five is then the actual work, um, deployment of relevant methodologies and tools. We have, um, there is a very clear policy framework, very clear standard operating procedures, very clear uh, processes and documentation that must be used to standardize and make sure that the, uh, uh, um, the, it, it, it is very easy uh, to do quality control. And uh, that is then going to be done as, as a rollout. And this is um, what is then going to be taking place in the next four years as we finalize uh, this work. Then uh, the results that are produced, uh, the outcomes of uh, settlement uh, discussions um, then get taken through um, um, a vigorous interrogation process, checking whether what is provide, being provided complies with the law as, as, as a settlement and uh, when that um, has been done and um, the, the National Land Allocation Control Committee assists us uh, in this regard, then certification of this application is then obtained uh, from, from the uh, Director General. And then the last step is then the acceptance of results when uh, agreements are signed and then there is uh, the, the actual transfer of uh, the land. There are then components uh, to the implementation strategy. Um, it was to make sure that the special master, uh, his office is uh, adequately capacitated, that has been done, um, to, 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 to make sure that the special master has an operational budget that they, uh, the special master has control over uh, within the control environment of the department that has been done, that uh, there must be a special master war room uh, to be set out, um, the war room will be uh, one of the um, one of the governance structures that will make sure that uh, progress is being recorded um, um, uh, periodically. And uh, the special master has already um, reached out to engage with the acting DG so that uh, issues can be discussed, including the finalization of the work uh, to set up the special master war room. Um, the plan also provides uh, for, for, for the uh, scrubbing and rectification of the data. Um, our data is in, in spreadsheets and the special master is required that um, um, we have, we procure a database software. That work, as we indicated earlier, is, um, has already started. Um, there are, um, there is a multi-site accelerated uh, claim resolution initiative. We have identified categories of applications that uh, are going to be prioritized. We've identified um, geographies uh, that are going to be identified. For an example, um, the, the Nomadin area in, 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 in KZN, where we, we saw unrest uh, in, in the commercial farming environment is one of the areas that we are going to be targeting as part of this uh, multi-site accelerated claim resolution in it. Uh, initiative. And in the next slide, we will then set out in detail how uh, which of the categories of the applications that are going to uh, be prioritized. Then uh, the special master has, um, um, has, has, has proposed and the department has agreed uh, that we need to set up a learning and engagement platform. 
a platform where we interact, the Office of the Special Master, the department and our stakeholders interact and um, that being part of active citizenry requirement of the constitution and the national development plan. We do not want labor tenants to be passive recipients of uh, government, government assistance, but we want them to actively participate in finding uh, solutions uh, to their issues. So number seven there speaks to that uh, learning and engagement platform to assist in the development uh, and, and implementation rather of the plan. Um, Mate, uh, for alternative five minutes remaining, can we conclude five minutes remaining? Yes, Chair. Um, there is provision made for alternative dispute resolution uh, mechanisms because um, when matters get referred to court, they tend to take longer. And uh, so we are going to be using ADR uh, to try and, and assist in the fast tracking. Of course, if there's no uh, uh, agreement, then uh, matters uh, then get uh, resolved. They get referred to court as, as, as the act uh, requires. There are 10 categories of uh, claims that have been identified, um, which um, are going to be prioritized as part of the multi-site uh, accelerated claim resolution initiative, ranging from cases where there's already agreement, cases where there is no agreement, all the way to cases where we can work with um, NGOs and, and, and non-profit organization and civil society as a whole um, in, in, in finding solutions uh, to those instances. And examples of cases that uh, fall in under 10 are those um, in, 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 in the area of Normandy. Of course, uh, the plan would not be complete without us identifying strategic risks. So there are five risks that uh, we have identified and with each risk, we then set out a remedial action. Um, the process will be legitimate um, because of our people-centered approach. Um, we are addressing the issues of uh, capacity. 93 officials have been made available. There are further assessments that are being done. We are procuring IT infrastructure to assist um, uh, to, to, to fast track the work. We, um, <clears throat> we operate. In a, in a contested domain, we are very aware of that, and we are using and relying a lot on mediation and uh, arbitration uh, to resolve disputes that uh, normally arise. And there is an, an ongoing issue about the capacity of the court, which the Minister of Justice is addressing through the land court bill. The last issue that we deal with then, Chairperson, as we conclude is then progress on the implementation plan. These matters, we have already referred to them as we're presenting. Um, the special master's office has been set up. It has been capacitated and resourced. The implementation plan was developed, finalized, and approved by the court. There is a memorandum of agreement between the special master and the department. That agreement was also approved by the court. The special master is visiting uh, our district offices together with national office. Um, or to institutionalize the, the implementation plan and set up the learning and engagement platforms. We are rolling out uh, our accelerated re claim resolution initiative, as we indicated. And in the current financial year, in the second quarter, um, we, we, were, we were then able uh, to, to settle 83 applications uh, out of the, the, the 500 that is targeted for the year. And we are well on our way to achieving um, the target of 500 and then further reports on this performance on settlement against 500, which is an APP target, will then be presented when the department deals with uh, its, 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 its progress in, uh, in terms of quarterly reports. That is the presentation, um, uh, uh, Chairperson. There are actions as, as, as uh, perhaps the last uh, issue. There are specific activities that are set out in the, in, the, in the implementation plan, the document that we submitted that set out the details in terms of the actual steps that are going to be taken to implement this plan. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Bautami, for your presentation. Honorable members, uh, there's the briefing by the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development on the implementation 
plans prepared by the Office of the Special Master of Labor Tenants and Land Claims Court. We will now have an opportunity to have questions and comments on this presentation before I hand back to the minister and the executive, as well as the officials of the department for responses. I will uh, then uh, begin with Honorable Klappe. In order here. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. And uh, uh, let me greet colleagues, the minister and officials accompanying you. Chair, I welcome the presentation that has just been done by Ndate Mudonzo and uh, feel that uh, we should commend the work that has been done thus far by the special master in collaboration with the department. It is a detailed implementation plan that they have just shown us here and we commend them for that, which shows commitment to deliver on the mandate that has been alluded to. But I must indicate Chair that in order for the special master to achieve all that, he would need a consistent support from the department in terms of capacity, the skills and financial resources. The portfolio committee will have to regularly monitor effective implementation of this plan and ensure that the constitutional rights of uh, labor tenants who have been waiting for so many years to be settled are realized. I just want to check with the presenter chair. My video is giving me problems this morning. The Ndatem Donswa indicated the 933 cases outstanding, which by end of September is 9 to 50. And this is the cases that are on the plans for the MTSF for sure. I just want to check, do you receive new applications? Because we don't want to find ourselves wanting that we only focusing on what is available or is it only about those that has been outstanding? Like you indicating that the court cases, once they are going to increase, do you still receive new applications in this regard? The other question chair that I want to check is that on the uh, implementation plan, operationalization of the implementation is based on assumptions if you look into the presentation, because uh, some activities and steps that need to have been finalized, there's no intervention measures in place if things don't go as planned. For an example, the assumption that the special master will be adequately capacitated by end of October 2020. Now, in case they, they are not able to achieve these uh, uh, targets, what happens in that regard? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Klappe. Honorable Trader. She's not on the platform, Chair. Okay, thank you. Honorable Mama Stein. Thank you, uh, Chairperson, and thank you uh, to the the presenters chair, um, I would like to start with the comments made by the minister and base my question on the dates of the targets that needs to be settled, especially if uh, the minister spoke about the office of the Valier General and that the Valier General's office is still not working at full capacity. And then also the challenges with the research capacity within the department. So if someone can just answer us on uh, the dates of these targets that needs to be um, uh, looking at the, the three or four year, five year period that targets has been set. Um, what 
um, influence or what were the 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 reasons that these targets were set for these dates? What 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 is the department thinking is going to happen to in order to 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 settle all those claims within the dates? Um, looking at the constraints and the capacity. And then speaking about the research, I would like to find out why is it necessary for the, um, the special master's office to do a validation or look at the capacity of our staff. Was it not done by the department before the court case? Um, even since 2016, when the case started, what kind of HR is in the department that's doing at capacity building or looking at the qualifications of staff in the department? And I think that is one of the main reasons, Chairperson, uh, looking at the reasons why we have so many court cases within this department. So I would like to find out what was the capacity or what is the role of the department to ensure that staff do have the uh, relevant um, tra training or the relevant qualifications to do this. Then chairperson the database um, of the software to house this information. I think one of the other challenges, and, and I, it, it, it links up to um, the question that my colleague just asked, how do we know that all the information of people that logged uh, claims is actually captured somewhere? Um, uh, for this then to be transferred to a, to a reliable database to be to be monitored. Chair, and I will tell you why, because I visited um, Pumalanga about a month ago, and this is not for uh, labor tenants, but for other claims. There are still people out there that said they have proof and they have lodged claims, but it's nowhere on a database. So I think the department needs to... Uh, to, to get their house in order as soon as possible, to get reliable databases in order for people to know where are their claims and, and what is it. So what would be the cost of that database? And will there be a specialist appointed or more than one specialist appointed to ensure that the database is um, in order? And then my last question, Chairperson, would be the budget of the uh, Office of the um, the special master. I see there's a budget attached uh, to this claims. Will that include the office of the special master uh, or will the budget for the special master come from somewhere else? And if it comes from somewhere else, where will that be from? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Honorable Matia, sir. Thank you so much, Honorable, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, let me welcome the presentation uh, the, by the department, by Mr. Mlocha on behalf of the department, and also join members of the Portfolio Committee in making a submission in these discussions. Look, uh, Honorable Chair, the appointment of Professor Levin deal with uh, labor tenant complaints. It's a matter that uh, confirms the correctness of the call we have made and Parliament rightly so. Resolve that uh, there is a need for a comprehensive investigation on the living and working conditions of farm workers. And labor tenants are part of of that category of, of workers in the country. And, and, and therefore, there's a need that that mandate of the Constitutional Court to Professor Levy is fully carried out and department ensures that it avails both human and capital resources to ensure that that task is carried out without any further, further delay. Secondly, of the number of labor tenants claims that have been submitted. It is very uh, clear that uh, the number of about 330, which is outstanding, in addition to what has been processed so far, there's still much of cases that must be 
discovered that must be brought so that they can be investigated. investigated. So I, I would want to agree with Honorable Chape that uh, there's a need that, uh, that we, we, the department runs a public awareness campaign through radio adverts and TV adverts, which will call on labor tenants who may have claims to be processed and to be settled to approach the office of the special masters and present such, such matters. So this committee must direct the department to, to, to run such a, a public awareness campaign and attain a time frame for such to be carried out. We must not leave any of our labor tenants or farm workers who may find him or herself in a situation where his or case, which are in majority of cases, legitimate cases, prejudiced and not, uh, not properly, properly addressed. This is what I would propose, Honorable Chair, and then and, and further say that uh, this work must be enhanced. Lastly, uh, I propose to this committee that at one point, at some point of the work of the special master, we must ask the special master to come and present before the committee the, challenge that is, the challenges that he experiences and ensure that where there are bottlenecks, the, the portfolio committee can exercise and play its oversight role in ensuring that uh, his work is unhindered. And I'm saying this against the background of the failure of the department to implement land reform uh, act, what otherwise is called land, uh, uh, Labor Tenants Act, Act number three of 1996. And grievances, complaints of farm workers and, 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 and labor tenants, we majority of cases have not been heard. With that, In the mind, in our minds, and in the, against that background, I propose that we must invite Professor Levin to come and make a presentation of his experiences and areas where we need the portfolio committee to, to support him. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dade Matias. The Honorable Kappa. Jim. Kute. Honorable Kappa is not on the platform, Chair. Oh, yeah, this video on earlier. Let's see, maybe when he comes back, we'll recognize him. Uh, Honorable Marshall. Honorable Chair, good morning. Uh, and also good morning to the, the minister and deputy ministers, my fellow workers, um, the officials of the department. Chair, let me take this opportunity and make sure that I, I join Methape in appreciating the work done by this uh, special master. Their presentation indeed is commended as a good work done. Chair, I would like to also understand uh, the time frames, timelines, especially on the 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 the, 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 the what would I say the presentation that was made on one one of the documents that they, it was presented by by the presenter. It was talking about um, I, I didn't see the number, I'm sorry uh, for my ignorance because I didn't see it, but uh, I can just re relate it. It says uh, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, and, but I didn't see the, what you call it, but it's, this, 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 this. Uh, yeah, please mute our microphones. We are picking up. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I was uh, talking about uh, 
the time frame. I wanted to understand the time frame on the implementation strategy component elements. The time frame, it was like they were talking about doing we, we, we are, we are, we are without time frames, of which I will suggest that uh, we be given time frames so that we can be able to do our oversight work when we do the work of the, the, the parliament. And then the other thing that I wanted to also to look at is the issue uh, uh, that uh, they talked about uh, nine workers that have, have been uh, brought in as to whether indeed the nine workers that they are brought, that they are brought in, the, in the department to come and assist them as they're talking about training. Will the training also be given us the timeline? When are they going to start? When are they going to finish? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mamun Babama. She attemba on Elisegile Okonum Party Swango Wake Ubukune Executive Yonke Usibal Kul Ukona Nobal Squatcha Ukon. And Yabude Ragakulu Diba. And I really appreciate the presence of the minister. I sorely missed her. And um, yeah, it, it lends us a kind of credence to our work when the minister is here, inclusive of the deputy ministers. Thank you, Chair. Um, I must compend, co commend the department on this presentation of the plan. And, but I would like to remind them that a plan is as good as the implementation thereof. So much as it is an excellent plan, we will be watching uh, the implementation. And we know that, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, we in South Africa are very good at making plans. But when it comes to implementation, we fall short. I hope that that will not be the trend here. Now, in terms of the database software that the department wants to procure, I would like to know if they have the budget at the moment to do that. And if they do have the budget, how much have they put aside for, for uh, this kind of software? In terms of the 93 officials identified to work on the labor tenant issues, what were the skills required for this type of job? And what informed the figure of 93? Were these new appointments or were these uh, 93 identified from the officials that are already there in the department? And if so, have we not taken them away from whatever they were doing in the past? I, I, um, I'd just like to, to understand whether their previous um, jobs are, are, are covered by somebody else, Chair. Now, when we talk on budget on the land allocation for these labor tenants, what land is identified for the labor tenants? Are they part of the 700,000 uh, uh, hectares that the minister spoke about? Where exactly are we going to get the land for these labor tenants? Now, coming to one of the slides, um, I see that. KZN and Pumalanga have the most um, applications, or should I say claims. And uh, I think KZN had about 11,5 and um, Pumalanga 8,2 thousand. Now, what is worrying me about this is that some, some provinces like the Western Cape, for instance, have absolutely nothing whatsoever. And I think that the, the Northern Cape is also um, not having any, any applications. What do you think informed this? Because I am aware that, you know, when we did the, um, the, the oversight, uh, uh, the public hearing, sorry, for expropriation without compensation, a lot of labor tenants came up and spoke quite, uh, um, you know, quite passionately about their lack of land in these two provinces. So I am really surprised that there are no applications whatsoever. And I must reiterate Metlape's question 
that says, are they still taking any more applications? Because in my mind, they should be concentrating and advertising more in the provinces where they have not received any um, uh, uh, um, applications. And then in the implementation, in the plan itself, there is seven steps. Are we now on step four, which is based on the implementation? And then Chair, I just have two more questions. Um, they spoke about diverse stakeholders who will be uh, involved in the learning and engagement platform. I would like to know who these diverse stakeholders are. I'm very much interested to know who the stakeholders will be and do they involve farmers and, and farm uh, um, organization. Then last question, sir. Uh, Chair. Oh, yes, this one is a very simple one. Could they just explain to me what ADR is? I, I could, uh, I am not aware what that abbreviation stands for. Yabulela Diba. The Honorable Mapriet. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think most of my colleagues, I hope you are doing well. I, I think most of my colleagues have covered the majority of the questions, specifically in terms of the staff, the skills and the capacity building thereof, as well as what they are doing. Um, I would, however, like to focus um, more on Chairperson. Um, the department spoke of a spreadsheet that they are keeping the claims on and that they are working from and that they gave to the special master to actually work from. Um, I would like the department to maybe clarify that. I think um, Honorable um, Stain mentioned that, um, but I also remember in some of our prior interaction, uh, inter inter uh, interactions, um, and I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was with regard to, to COVID relief um, but there were a, a number of other things. The department mentioned that they do not have databases, that they worked off a spreadsheet. spreadsheet. And I would like the, the department to maybe just clarify that for us. And maybe, and maybe in terms of that, speak to what are the plans in the future? Um, because as um, I think it was Honorable Stan and Honorable Flappy mentioned, um, in my mind, there's, there's room for improvement and there's um, and we can, um, and they can, with a spreadsheet, sorry, I've lost my English words today, Chairperson. Um, it's because, <laughs> I think it's because I've been in the free state too long. Um, but you, you can't find contact details that there are a lot of problems in terms of, of, in terms of just using a spreadsheet and not having a database. I'm thinking of the farmer, um, the farmer register, I'm thinking of drought relief, I'm thinking of the voucher system that we used for COVID, and I'm thinking of all these things. So maybe if they can just talk to us and maybe um, just inform us, are they looking at systems, are they looking at databases? I know taking it back to, to SASA and, and social development, I know they are developing databases to actually have the different systems talk to one another and their interdepartmental um, you know, programs to also talk to one another. And I, I really think that's one thing that the department can look at specifically in terms of all these things, specifically in terms of land tenure, of owners, of, of recap, of CASP, of all of their projects. I think that could make it better to have one big database with all the different facets of that, but that would just be my input. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Priet. Dabezita Kosenko, the Honorable Ebekul. Yeah, colleagues, hello. Um, honorable members of the Portfolio Com Committee and the Department. Chairperson, um, since uh, uh, the winds of change were approaching, some farmers uh, started evicting their farm, uh, ten the farm tenants. And those farms ended up uh, being owned and, and sold those farms to new uh, farm owners who at certain stages, they started destroying the, the graves as a proof of the, 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 the as a proof that uh, the claimants were once lived in those farms. I'm just uh, interested, in, interested, in, interested in knowing Chairperson whether those uh, 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 people who moved from those farms into former homelands, who are now in, 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 in the homelands. 
are they going to be give, give or afforded or given the opportunity to claim uh, uh, that they were part of of of, the, of those of, of of those tenants in those farms? And um, again, it, 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 the 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 what do you call it? This uh, institution that has been uh, 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 given the, the the powers to to deal with the the, the, the to to attend to the the, the, the claims, are, are, are they going to allow those people as well to, to to come forward and be added to the numbers of, of the claims that are appearing as have been presented? Thank you. The Honourable Masati, Masati. Thank you very, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, good morning, Minister and Deputy Ministers, and good morning to uh, management of the department. Chair, my questions um, first and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to also join Member and Member Kabin, as well as Member Bam, in a giving some sort of congratulations to the department in as far as the master plan is concerned, that at least we are moving forward. There is some serious progress since we once discussed this matter. And this also comes at a time when, when really uh, uh, our labor tenants are, are, are really having challenges, serious challenges in as far as, as, as the pro, uh, process is concerned. Chairperson, let me focus on the presentation. One, the presentation speaks about 93 officials for the master, uh, the special master. And it says 32 are full-time. First and foremost, I want to check with, maybe I'm not conversant in as far as the, the, the key issues that the special master needed to deal with. Is the special master office a permanent office? Because if it's, 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 uh, it's going to become a permanent office, that means we would have to look into how do we make it operational in full capacity. But if it's not, it's going to deal with only particular issues. The 32% of full-time individuals, what will it mean when the time to close this office comes to an end? Because it says full-time, it's not say contractual, uh, uh, officials. Se secondly, same on officials. I want to check the 45% uh, of officials that are not entirely focused on labor tenants. What are they focused on? What, what are their responsibilities? And lastly, Chair, uh, can the department also give us a, a breakdown on um, officials who are seconded to the, the the special master, inclusive of everyone who's at the special master, in terms of location, responsibility, in terms of levels, we might. I think it is important to know where are these officials allocated. What are they doing in the special master? And lastly, chair, it's on the uh, the claims themselves. I want to agree with uh, colleagues who are saying uh, we should on, honestly and truly look into. Uh, getting more claims if the process is still open for 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 people to 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 make uh, claims, uh, twenty thousand is not enough, and uh, and looking at the outstanding numbers of of of, of claims is only nine, just uh, above nine thousand. So I think if we are honestly and truly serious about this particular process, we would consider reopening the process, allowing for more adverts, making sure that the departments. Uh, uh, reaches as far and as, as, as our rural places as possible. Lastly, Chair, I want to find out in the pro with this process of, of claims, what has been the role of provincial departments uh, linked to our department? What has been the role of provinces in making sure that labor tenants are actually uh, not necessarily headhunted, but are assisted with this particular process, are identified, are made aware of the process that is relating to, to the special master. And lastly, last chair, the basic project management process. I would also want to see the risk management plan and quality and assurance plan of the department, of, of the special master. Thank you very much, chair. Thank you, Honorable Member Sati. 
the Honorable Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Minister, Deputy Ministers, and Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, I think my colleagues covered uh, quite a number of areas. Uh, I just want to focus on slide number six. I think, uh, you know, it is very important, Chair, that uh, if you really cannot measure it properly, you're not going to be able to manage it. Um, the statement says 93 officials will be um, allocated to, to manage this project. And obviously, the minister highlighted the issue of capacity in terms of research and the value general. The concern, or let me just highlight the numbers the way I see them. In terms of year one, which is 2020, 21, 300,000 is allocated per claim, which is 150 million. Year 2021, 146,266 uh, is allocated per claim. That's based on the numbers that we are given. 2022, 23, 88,920 is allocated per claim. So I've got concern with regards to how these numbers were derived. I just want some clarity with regards to how uh, uh, the numbers were, were agreed or uh, you know, um, allocated in terms of the budget uh, that, is, uh, that is before us to address this matter. Because if you look at the base uh, on medium term averages between 2020 and 2024, 1,500 applications shall be concluded uh, per annum. This is how, according to how I made the budget uh, allocation. And then if you look at that 1,500, that means that uh, um, the, the department will be finished with this process of the outstanding claims in six years, which is fine. Uh, I think if the department can explain if they are uh, on record in terms of making sure that in six years this program will be concluded in terms of the 9,300 uh, outstanding applications. I just want to go to the, so if you look at the budget, the budget that we have got is from 2021 to 2023. So 2021, the budget was 150. And then if you look at the number of applications that they will be looking at, they're talking about 500 applications. And 2022-21 is 290, and the number of applications is 1,500. So you just do a, a very simple figure of dividing this and say, what is the, the number of applications that will be handled and against what, what budget? And then again, then you go to the 93 officials that will be working on this project, and then you allocate it to budget. So the 93 officials in year uh, 2021, they will be working on the 150. So my concern, Chair, is that if the 93, the 93 official will not be able to, to handle the volume that is increasing from 2021 to 2024, and obviously with the budget that is allocated. So I just want to hear from the department, how did they arrive in terms of uh, budgeting this medium term focus of uh, handling this problem and uh, coming to uh, a conclusion uh, by year 2025, I think, because uh, after 2023, then they will be left with 2,500 and they will have concluded their work. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ntate Masipa. Honorable Ntate Muntwe. Eh, I've got a few questions, but before I come to my question, I think it is important for one to uh, assist the minister or the department in responding to a question that was asked by Honorable Mbabama when she said, is there land that has already been identified to be given or for settling the labor tenants? Now, I want to, here is the answer, Chair. There are some white racists who stole and are in control of more than 10,000 hectares of land. That is the land that must be identified and be given back to our people as we restore the dignity of a black child minister. The question that I want to pose to the department chair, 
they made mention of uh, the acquisition of temporary uh, uh, capacity in the department. And they made mention that uh, such a process was actually undertaken through the labor brokers. The labor brokers that have continued to exploit the workers in this country. And uh, yet a government department in this day and age still recruits workers through labor broking. I want to find out from the department how much, who approved, in fact, that the workers should be appointed through labor broking, how much money was paid out, and how much did money did actually go of the money paid out to that labor brokers, broking companies or whatever, how much money did actually go straight into pockets of the workers? And are there, is there any intentions uh, of the department to acquire services of the workers through labor broking in the future? Do you still see that uh, as a vehicle of uh, getting workers? The other question, Chair, I think most members spoke on this issue. Uh, I just don't want to take much of your time uh, on the issue of the database that uh, was actually referred to. Uh, there's where the department uh, is actually admitting that uh, the credibility of the consolidated national database is actually in question. Now, I want to ask the department, Hori, is the report that they have presented before us a true reflection of claims lodged? And if not, is there provision uh, to consider some valid claims that your department has not traced due to the unre unreliable database that you have put in place? Now, I want to link this question to this here to say, we had the same issue of the database uh, in the Land Claims Commission. And I think lots and lots of taxpayers money was used in getting a system or a database in place in dealing with issues at the Land and the Land Claims Commission. Why is the department not using the same? Why should they go and get another system so that uh, we're able to deal with that chair? Other question chair? is that uh, uh, obviously I think uh, are the numbers that you are getting in terms of uh, lost claims, is that the final number? Or those numbers are going to increase because there's precedence that uh, your numbers at the commissions, they keep on increasing each and every time there's a presentation made. Is the department sure that the number as it appeared on the database is the actual number or are we yet to see an increase in that number? The last question, Chair, is a, it is a known fact that as soon as claims are lodged for labor tenants, uh, farmers, as soon as they are aware that uh, labor tenants, there's a claim on labor tenants, they start selling off those particular farms. And another person who comes into the farm evicts the labor tenants that have already submitted an application before the department. I'm speaking about this, making reference to one matter in, in, in Dr. Kenneth Kaunda at or near Pochestru, where the head, the father to the head of the solidarity is actually, uh, he has evicted labor tenants in that particular farm. Now, I want to know from the department, is there any provision that is actually put in place on what is it that the farmer can do as soon as an application for, by the labor tenants has actually been submitted, because some tend to evade uh, that process by quickly evicting people out of their farms by selling them. And the one who comes in claim ignorance and wants to remove people from the farm. Thank you, the Honorable Ntate Muntwedi. I see the Honorable Kapa has been able to join us. Well, Kapa. Tim. Okay. 
it seems uh, he's uh, gone away again, although he's still on the platform. Honourable members, is there an honourable member that I have not been able to recognise who would like to pose a question? Well, let me Hon also... Honourable Yes. Just a, just a, 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 a follow-up question. I just wanted to know from the department whether there's a budget that has been set aside for acquisition of land to such a labor tenants application? And if so, how much is that which has been set aside? Secondly, you may set aside money, but you may find that there's no land to be, to be acquired. Is there any land available which can be acquired? I think those are the two related questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Matias. Honorable members, let's uh, appreciate uh, the presentation uh, that has been put before us by the department and also welcome the input of the Honorable Minister Mamutitiza. Uh, the work of the master is very important and provides lessons for other programs of the department e.g. that would be restitution plus CASP and other related programs. I would like to know, therefore, honorable members, uh, are there any plans put in place to ensure that these processes, uh, this process is beneficial and that the capacity and not at operational level but at a management level is enhanced. For example, there seems to be a lack of project management skills within the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. We are therefore concerned, honorable members, about the possibilities of lost land claims and untraceable land claims as we have always been concerned in the restitution process. What is the department doing about these? In the past, the department used labor brokers to appoint workers. In the entire department currently, are the people employed through labor brokers? And if so, how many? What are the reasons for using labor brokers for recruitment of staff? And lastly, honorable members, mine would also want to zoom into the specifics uh, of the Western Cape as well as the Northern Cape. Particularly when I see that uh, there's not been any claims submitted is that a true reflection or is that a mere a challenge that the indigenous people of the Western Cape and the Northern Cape, that being the Sen and the Khoi, have not really had an opportunity to be engaged and conscientized about this. Various portions of land have been stripped throughout the Western Cape and the Northern Cape of its indigenous people. And they have been uh, 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 rendered as second class citizens in the land of their birth. You will find uh, in my own experience when we were driving with uh, Honorable Mashati coming from uh, uh, George to uh, Vosta, uh, we were witnessing during the ad hoc committee on section 25 that's dealing with the expropriation of land without compensation. Vast amount of land has been taken by farmers and the indigenous people of the Western Cape and the Northern Cape, specifically the Sen and the Khoi, have been removed of the land and kept in concentration camps with a, a shack towns where they are living under appalling living conditions. 
And what I would like to understand, Honorable Minister and officials of the department is, have we really done sufficient work to ensure that the people of the Western Cape and the Northern Cape have had a fair and a clear opportunity to be able to be well versed of these issues and be able to submit their land claims, their uh, uh, claims. Thank you. Honorable Minister, over to you and the officials of the department. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and members. As indicated that uh, I would request that I start, even though it would have been better that the official start, given that I have to go to the board of OBP. And thank you very much for the comments that have been made by members on the presentation and also given guidance on what their proposals are. I just want to indicate, Chairperson, that in terms of the Labor Tenants Act number three of 1996, it actually defines who is the labor tenants in terms of that legislation, and it excludes farm workers. That might have been the mistake of the lawmakers at the time, but it was very specific that this category of people must be people who have been staying on that land until 2 June, if I recall very well, 1995. So there's a particular category of people we are talking about. I appreciate the issue raised by Honorable Matthias in respect of the farm workers, and I'm not sure what the conclusion of the debate on the motion that they've raised might be. Obviously, these were mini plenaries, and I'm sure when the matter goes to the National Assembly for debate, me members would look at it, uh, you know, specifically on how we could address the plight of farm workers, because all of us would appreciate that the extension of Security of Tenure Act might not have addressed the matters that we wanted to address uh, fully in respect of the tenure security of farm workers. And in respect of the labor tenants, the question was asked which land. In most instances, those people are resident in those farms where they are making the claims for. But if they make a choice of an alternative land, the department therefore will make an acquisition of that alternative land. But the first prize is the land in which they actually are living where they've been labor tenants for many years. There has been an issue raised about the other provinces. I just want to say that after the Labor Tenants uh, Act of 1996 was passed, there was very massive public communication across the country where the state was actually clarifying what this legislation is about, calling on the labor tenants to apply. And that's how this figure comes from in terms of the those people who lodged their claims. Some of them were settled. And that's why you would see that the number had gone down. But obviously, the remaining number around which the Muelasa claim was lost related to the remaining numbers of the labor tenants and it talks to those figures. And this is what the master has been asked to supervise and make sure that the department execute in terms of implementation. The question was raised by Honorable Stain, why does the master need to uh, validate particularly the staff and whether they are the correct people that he needs? Remember that the injunction of the court is that the special master would actually lead this process. So we are working with him and in terms of the implementation of his mandate, is an independent master of the court who must ensure that in terms of the judgment, we are actually consistent with the application of this judgment. So the plan that he has put in place which the court has accepted is for him to also be, you know, 
happy about the quality of the people that he's going to work with to ensure that this plan is executed. So I just felt I needed to clarify that for Honorable Stain as to why the master needs it. I mean, it's not a matter that is de decided by us as a department, it's a matter that the special master in terms of his mandate and as a person that the court has given the mandate to execute has to do that to satisfy himself that the plan is indeed implementable. Members have raised the need for capacitating the office. Yes, we have actually budgeted for that. The first phase, for instance, the, spa, the master, when he met with us, he requested initially four high level staff at a chief director level that he needed to work with him on producing the plan, and that was done. The court has indeed said the master will work with the department. So even if there is new staff component that have to be brought in, it will have to be weighed against the mandate of the master and the timeline. The court has given the master five years to actually conclude this work. And therefore any new employment of personnel will have to take that into consideration and also to say after that process what will these people do the people that have been taken from the department are people who had been working on the labor tenants in the first instance and some of them were in the provinces where some of those claims were completed and therefore they were seen as a resource that could be utilized and i'm sure a uh, time can deal with other detail in respect of that. Do we have to, as members say more, uh, again, we need to run another public um, awareness to encourage people to lodge claims. I am not sure in respect of this mandate of the court, whether we can do that. But I think it's a matter that um, we will have to reflect on as this committee. The court actually is not perceiving any new applications, it's dealing with the old claims that were not resolved. And that is the mandate of the master in terms of what he has to do. The issue of the land for labor tenants, I think I've dealt with it. It would be land where they are, it would be land that is alternative that they would choose which then we are supposed to procure in order to deal with those issues. Issues of risk and quality assurance, yes, we will ensure that working with the master, we deal with that and present it to the committee. The request for the master to come to present in the committee, we will actually uh, pass on that message. And I, I must say that this is a very difficult arrangement and the court itself agreed because this process has never happened before where the, there is a section and a program of a department is supervised by an independent body of the court. And in terms of that responsibility, whether the court perceived that the master must actually present to the portfolio committee, that I think it's a matter that the special master, when we communicate your request to him, will have to clarify with a Judge Mia in the Land Claims Court as to whether, in terms of his role, he can actually do that. And I just want to be open with members to say it's not a matter where we can definitely say we will, you know, request the master to come and he shall so come, but it's a matter that will have to be clarified between himself and the uh, judge of the land claims uh, court and the minister of justice to whom the judiciary uh, is responsible for. The other matters will actually be dealt with by the uh, team of the department. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and members. Uh, officials of the department, you may proceed. We have about just over five minutes on this before we move to the Land Claims Commission's presentation. 
Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, the Minister has uh, indeed responded to the majority of um, the issues. Uh, Honorable Chape, as the Minister indicated, we uh, there was a deadline to submit uh, the, the applications it's contained in uh, legislation. Um, the, <clears throat> um, the issues about capacity Minister has addressed uh, that are raised by both Honorable Chape and uh, Honorable uh, stay. On the issue of um, the, the database, uh, which Honorable Stay and uh, Honorable Briad uh, raised, um, indeed, um, we, we, we have information on spreadsheets. The issues about reliability relates to the fact that the information is contained in a spreadsheet and not about um, the content of uh, the, the information. And because of these issues that have arisen um, in, in other programs of the department about holding uh, information in spreadsheets, that is where uh, the issue of the database then comes in. We are busy preparing a business case uh, for, for, for the database. And um, it, it, it will be a database that will be used by the department for the various pro products that it has um, so that we can we can we can deal with these issues. In the context of um, the, the the work of the special master, uh, the special master has requested, and the court has approved that a master data specialist be appointed, um, who will be responsible uh, for 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 the database to update the database, and 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 this database, as we indicated, will be a reporting tool. And it will assist even when labor tenants are inquiring about their applications will be able to uh, then uh, at the touch of a dial provide them uh, with uh, progress reports. Honorable Matthias, um, the mandate of the special master is set out in, in, in the court judgment and it is to supervise the department's implementation of the outstanding applications. So uh, the work in so far as it relates to a comprehensive investigation on the socio-economic conditions is important, uh, but uh, we may have to look at other ways of uh, generating that information. I must, however, point out that um, in, in 2015, um, there, is, there is work that was done in 2014, a report in 2015 by the International Labor Organization, and they produced a report looking at the socio-economic conditions of um, uh, farm workers in South Africa. Um, one of the criticisms in that report uh, or about that report is that it looked at farm workers and did not look at farm dwellers. In provinces like the Western Cape, a farm worker is normally a farm dweller as well. But in the in, in KZN in um, Pumalanga, um, a farm worker and a farm dweller are normally two different people. Uh, the province of, um, of, of, of Pumalanga, uh, the premier conducted um, commissioned a commission on, of inquiry on socioeconomic conditions of um, farm farm dwellers uh, in in the province of Pumalanga, and there was a report generated in 2016. So this comprehensive in investigation that Honourable Matthias is is, is um, uh, indicated is then um, would be building on work that has already uh, been done in 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 the recent past. The budget for acquisition, uh, Honorable Matthias, is contained in slide six uh, of, um, of, of our presentation. And um, in, that, in that slide six, um, we, 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 we set out um, the fact that this is the budget. Um, these are the targets that have been set aside. And Honor Honorable Masipa, the, 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 the slide six, states that the, those are targets on the basis of the levers that are currently available. What is currently available uh, is acquisition of land, um, just an equitable compensation paid. It is land donations. So equating um, um, or doing just an, a, a, a division of the budget by the number of application, um, trying to come out with a cost per application that way is not necessarily correct because uh, we, are, we are seeing that land is being donated by uh, some of um, 
the progressive farmers that understand the need uh, to provide secure tenure to these people who have been residing on their properties uh, for a very long time. We are also, um, um, there is another lever that um, will, 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 will come into play in the future. The Expropriation Act makes provision for certain instances where compensation payable for land may be nil and um, land that is required for the settlement of labor tenants uh, is one of the categories where compensation may be determined to be nil. So um, in, the, in, the, in the later years, when, when that act is, um, is, 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 is um, signed into law, that is one of the levers that will become uh, available for us uh, in, 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 the, in the acquisition uh, uh, processes. We, we, we have dealt, we have dealt with the issues of budget. Uh, the minister has clarified why in the Western Cape and, the, and in, the, in the Northern Cape, there are no applications. Yes, there was a comprehensive communication campaign. The applications didn't come. In the Western Cape, um, there, there is um, what is generally called as a DOP system, which was implemented. Uh, it still uh, is being implemented but uh, the requirements of that definition of what a labor tenant is um, does not, um, though the, the people in the, in the Western Cape generally do not meet their require, that requirement. They are more farm workers, and as the minister indicated, farm workers are specifically excluded in the definition of, um, of, of, of a labor tenant. The, 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 the steps, the seven steps, are both sequ sequential and contemporaneous. So um, work is currently being done. And if you look at page 62, Honorable Marshall, of the um, uh, document we provided, the implementation plan, it then sets out steps in detail, activities that must be conducted and timelines within which those activities, which are part of the steps um, that, uh, 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 that are set out must, um, must be, um, must be implemented. Our stakeholders um, do include uh, farm, farmers associations, uh, commodity organizations, labor tenants themselves, um, they, their organizations, NGOs, NPOs, and various uh, 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 formations that do work in this, in this space. In Kosu Tsabekulu, Honorable Tsabekulu, the the, indeed, um, there is a connection between labor tenants applications and evictions. It is, it is not a new trend. Um, it, 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 it is something that has been continua, continuing. But the people that were physically moved out of farms who were labor tenants and were settled elsewhere, the restitution program covers uh, those, those, those individuals. Um, a, a claim for restitution is a claim for a right in land, and the right in land to, is defined to include, amongst others, a labor tenancy interest that people lost. So, so, so those people who were moved into the uh, former homelands, they would then get uh, redress under, um, under, under, under the restitution program. We have 95 officials. We have 93 officials, I beg your pardon. All these officials are officials of the department. They have personal numbers. Yes, we have some of them still on contract, but that contract is a departmental contract. There is no middleman insofar as these 93 officials are, are, are concerned. There is a breakdown of who those officials are, what their levels are, and uh, where they are placed in terms of uh, geographical um, location. The 45% that are not just full-time labor tenants, they are dealing with other tenure issues. So you find that when we, are, when we enter a farm to process a labor tenant application, we will find other farm dwellers, other farm workers uh, whose tenure is insecure. So when we then address the labor tenant application, we deal with the other people that we also find on that farm so that uh, we, can, we can then give a, a, a tenure security. So the other part of the work that uh, these officials are doing then relates to our mandate insofar as the extension of security of tenure act is concerned. 
those people that have not submitted labor tenants applications uh, and they are tenants, they do have protection in the act. But in so far as providing them with secure tenure, because they reside on a farm with the consent of an owner, they are an occupier under the extension of security of tenure act, and we provide them with tenure security using section four of- Can uh, we conclude? The, the, the concluding part then, um, uh, um, honorable chair, relates to the, the reference to labor brokers. Four years ago, honorable chair, the court required the department to provide information on an urgent basis regarding its work on labor tenants and the capacity the department at the time, it did not have um, capacity to send uh, officials to go and do that work. So yes, there was four years ago, uh, use of labor brokers for a very short uh, period in order for the department to respond to an order of court that had been granted uh, regarding it submitting uh, certain information to court. The implementation plan in tracing the history of the work that has been done does make mention uh, to a, a labor broker, but it was for a very short term to respond to a question that was asked uh, in court and uh, the 93 officials were talking about nobody is, 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 is employed uh, through um, a labor broker. Uh, those those are the responses then, Jefferson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donja, for your responses. Honorable members, we will uh, now have to uh, move to our second presentation due to time. And uh, should we have any follow-up questions, uh, please uh, feel free to send to the secretariat and they will forward to the department for written responses. Let us now move on to the briefing by the Commission on Restitution of Land Rights on progress reports submitted to the Land Claims Court about settlement of outstanding claims and the status report on Project Kuyasa. I will now hand over, therefore, to the Commissioner, Humam Koboto. Um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, uh, uh, Minister and Deputy uh, Ministers present, the DG, and uh, to my colleagues, um, good morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give this presentation. Uh, Chair, what I will do is that I will read some of the slides, but some I will just speak to. Um, I am supported uh, by the Deputy Land Claims Commissioner uh, Acting, Ms. Cindy Benyani, as well as um, Sanjay Singh, who is responsible for corporate support and um, Ms. McManaman was responsible to support me on finance. Um, as you've already articulated, Chair, the presentation that we're making today is in line with the order that was granted by the Constitutional Court uh, on the 19th of March 2019, uh, which requires that we submit six monthly reports to the land claims. And um, the, the, this first slide just talks to what the order of the court was. So I will just briefly go through that so that um, give context. And just to say, Chair, that uh, the presentation today is basically what we have submitted to the Land Claims Court. And uh, we have submitted this as our third uh, report to the court uh, uh, as required. So the order basically said that um, um, we must submit the number of outstanding old order claims in the regions uh, and on the basis in terms of which we administer them. Uh, the anticipated date of completion on each, in each region, um, including uh, the short term targets that we intend to deal with wanted us to identify the nature of any constraints, whether it's budgetary or otherwise, that uh, we, we face. 
uh, in terms of our anticipation of uh, dealing with those old order claims. Uh, solutions that have been implemented or under consideration for us to address these and any other matters that um, the land claims court might direct uh, for us to deal with in order for us to be able to deal with the claims. And um, uh, in line with the uh, rec reporting requirements of the, um, the land claims court, as I've already indicated, uh, we've submitted um, uh, uh, two reports, and this one is the third one. Uh, which was submitted on the 19th of November um, uh, 2020. Uh, next slide. So uh, in effect, we have uh, complied uh, with um, the requirement. Uh, next slide, Ralph, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chair, uh, therefore, the first question is, uh, what is our baseline? I think in our previous discussions, we have highlighted the fact that um, the commission over time has had challenges in terms of the um, veracity of the, the, the statistical information based on the fact that uh, we were dealing with manual, manual records that were lodged then and were lodged in different forms and could be done in police stations, NGOs and the likes. And so there were obvious challenges in terms of stats. And uh, we have uh, done a whole lot of work uh, through Project Guiasa to try and clean up that da database. And we've done, uh, as we said, um, a process uh, which is at least uh, about 75% in terms of integrity, that's the internal process. But we're also, as I've, we, we indicated in the past, are going to be using um, external uh, audits just so that we finally audit um, our statistics and are able to sign off on them. Uh, but Chair, this is an important slide which speaks to uh, that is outstanding um, in terms of the, the old order claims. Uh, if you look at um, uh, the, the graphs that you see there, um, you have a, a total of uh, 8,000 8, outstanding, 8,447, that's in all nine provinces, but the pure outstanding is 7,000 as of the 20 of uh, July 2020, and we also count phase projects, um, uh, which is 1,398. Um, and uh, we then, if you look at the, uh, the left, uh, um, sorry, the, the right hand, where you've got the provincial claims breakdown, you've got the breakdown of the outstanding claims per province, uh, where we, we, we show you uh, the various, and again, you will see that Umalanga, Limpopo, and, and KZN have got the highest number of outstanding claims uh, per uh, our assessment. And um, the, 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 then you've got the national portion summary that speaks to the portions that are under claim, because as we've said, in, you can have one claim form, but the claim form um, uh, can also uh, um, refer to multiple portions of land that are, um, are in, in question. If you'll just give me a second here to just try and mute um, the, the notices that are coming in from my emails. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, and so, um, uh, so you'll see that uh, those are uh, 49,000 uh, portions uh, of, of uh, land that we're talking to. And again, we have the provincial breakdown. Um, and uh, you will note that the highest is in Limpopo, uh, followed by Mpumalanga, uh, KZ, I mean, followed by KZN Mpumalanga. Um, and also what is interesting to note is that uh, uh, Northern Cape and Northwest um, appear on, on the chart, despite the fact that you, if you look at the number of claims that they have outstanding, you would think that uh, they would have uh, smaller numbers. However, for example, in Northwest, you will have one claim that has a thousand portions that we have to deal with. So that is the nature of um, the analysis that we've done and we're able to speak to. And next slide. What we've also done, uh, Chair, is uh, to look at our business process and actually at, at try and understand 
And I, again, remember that this is what we are reporting to the Land Claims Court as per the judgment. We've identified where in our business process uh, uh, the, the backlogs or the bottlenecks are. And um, if you look at it, uh, we, I noted that research and gazetting uh, create a 44% um, backlog and um, valuations also 14% uh, and settlement of claims 15%. Uh, um, uh, We've got other minor ones like uh, matters that are in court uh, that might increase over time, but uh, we have been able to then break down exactly where our bottlenecks are uh, so that we're able to put up a plan in terms of how we intend to deal with this. And uh, we've also been able to tell you that 71% of the claims that are outstanding are rural and 28% are urban, and we're still determining 1% uh, of those. Next slide. And um, in terms of our report, uh, courts, we have um, uh, had to explain that we've got um, uh, to submit an annual performance plan, as well as a five-year strategic plan, which is aligned um, um, in, to the department and to government's planning protocols. So uh, I'm not going to dwell with this one. Can you move, please, to the next slide? Uh, these are the uh, targets that uh, a chairperson you would be aware of. It's just uh, uh, our uh, APP for this uh, current year. And we're showing um, the revision downward that was uh, caused by um, the intervention of COVID-19. Uh, this has already been presented to the committee previously, so I won't go into it. Next slide. Um, we have said to the court that we have under Project Guiasa a backlog reduction strategy to be able to deal with uh, what I've presented in the previous slides, which are the number of claims that are outstanding uh, and where in the various um, um, provinces uh, they are. We uh, also in our work have been able to identify uh, where we'll tell you the province, we'll tell you the district and actually which districts have the highest number um, of claims that are outstanding. Uh, that uh, information is available in the um, project. Uh, yeah. uh, My man visits a child, child a traditional Get, gets given a push. Uh, Apologies, Chair. Um, Roger, please, uh, apologies for the interruption. Can we request um, that uh, members and uh, all those on the platform to please mute your microphones? We are picking up uh, interruptions on Mama Kaboto's presentation. I therefore would like to request that all of you on the platform, please uh, mute your microphones. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. So I uh, was saying that the actual breakdown of um, which districts have the highest number of outstanding claims is also available in the presentation. I think that was submitted to the portfolio committee, which specifically deals with uh, Project Guiasa. Uh, but um, under the Project Guiasa, we've got the backlog reduction strategy, which has like, identified uh, four core issues um, which is the core back, uh, uh, backlog, a uh, business enabling strategy. Uh, 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 two of them, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, four relate to the backlog and then the two relate to the business uh, enabling strategies. Uh, it's a total of six. And uh, this is to ensure that the commission is adequately equipped to restore all the land rights. Um, we want to establish the commission as an autonomous organization improving the governance structures and overall service delivery, and define a clear organizational mandate in line uh, um, with the processes uh, supported by the appropriate structure. These are the six um, um, as, uh, identified um, uh, uh, as line items to be dealt with. Uh, improve stakeholder management and communication channels overall. This, uh, implementing a secure information uh, system that promotes uh, um, effective management, 
and for us to prepare the commission to adequately process new order claims uh, when authorized to do so. Uh, uh, Chair, we say when authorized to do so, acknowledging the fact that currently there is no enabling legislation that would allow us to deal with the new order claims. And as per the court order, we are focusing on the old order claims, which we refer to as the um, old order versus new order claims. Uh, next slide. Uh, what we've been able to identify as well in the backlog reduction strategy is uh, uh, our business improvement process, uh, which has uh, allowed us to do a full anal analysis on the land restitution projects, pro process and uh, key enla enabling processes. This has allowed us to be able to identify some of the things that we can take out in our processes so that we can improve to the extent that we've been able to say that um, the as is, uh, which uh, takes about 200, uh, 242 weeks for us to settle a claim, can be reduced to 63 weeks if we're able to uh, um, be provided with the required uh, resources and deal with the commission as proposed and that is a fit for purpose. Um, next slide. This slide just speaks to what I've just said uh, at the bottom. It, it, it shows you the various processes around the screening, qualification of the claim, the verification, the evaluation and negotiation, negotiation settlement and finalization. And so uh, we potentially can reduce the, the turnaround time uh, by 74%. Next slide. And we've also identified obviously gaps in relation to our standard operating procedures. And as a result, we've put in a policy development committee that is uh, doing a review of the SOPs as well as development of those that need to be uh, incorporated. Next slide. Uh, what we've uh, been able to identify uh, as key challenges or constraints um, uh, in our processes through the project Guiasa, which uh, deals with the backlog reduction strategy, is as I already indicated in, in the previous slide, slides where I showed the business process, is that we've got um, uh, claims that uh, are, are blocked at research and gazetting, land valuations and negotiations and settlement stage. And as we indicated, we said 44%. Uh, sitting at uh, uh, research and gazetting. And um, this sometimes is a situation where we've identified that some provinces did not do comprehensive research of all of the land portions that are under claim and instead focused on the ones that were available and ready for settlement. Uh, that's an issue that we're dealing with. And secondly, we're dealing with a number of complex claims with competing and overlapping rights. An example would be those claims that are in Sikukune, uh, but uh, that is uh, work that we are dealing with. Next slide, Ram. Uh, we've said 14% settling, uh, sitting at negotiations. Um, and um, we uh, have issues there where, because that's at the stage where we have to sit with all of the stakeholders to try and find uh, an agreed upon uh, settle, uh, settlement agreement. If the parties don't agree with the matter to court, if um, uh, uh, either for, for, for the court to adjudicate or for expropriation. And um, then we're also sitting with about 14% of the claims where they have to be valued. And as you are aware, the minister has already spoken to this one that uh, in terms of uh, section 12 of the a property valuation act, only the valuer general can uh, value, uh, conduct valuations uh, for land reform purposes. So we have to then rely on them. Uh, we've already highlighted that sometimes we, uh, in the past, would have a, a turnaround that's over 18 months for us to get anything from the valuer general's office, but we have signed an SLA to try and address some of the issues. And uh, next slide. The other issue, uh, Chair, that we've spoken about is uh, the fact that the Commission's uh, current structure is not aligned to the Commission's mandate. And as we know that Section 27.5 uh, of the Constitution is where we get our mandate, 
which results in the Restitution Act, and specifically in terms of the Commission, we are guided by Section 6 of the Restitution Act, which identifies specific functions of the Commission. And uh, further, in terms of Section 21, uh, the Commission is, is, is required to submit its own um, annual report, uh, APP, uh, to Parliament. It's important for us, Chair, to um, lift this one because uh, this financial year uh, that just closed the um, Auditor General of South Africa uh, has specifically um, um, qualified the Commission on the basis that we are not complying with uh, our legislation. Uh, as far as they are concerned, we are a commission in law. And um, because um, we are established in terms of national legislation and we are funded uh, from the National Reserve Revenue Fund and we are accountable to parliament. Um, what they expected, next slide, draft, uh, they expected was that we would uh, have submitted separate financials uh, from um, those of the department. And uh, so uh, in the last financial year, we did submit financials, but um, there were uh, specific qualifications that have uh, resulted in the fact that um, a lot of our work is still done through the department. As you understand, though we are a commission in law, we are still considered to be a branch, in fact, branch three of the department and therefore have no, no resources in terms of capacity for us to be able to do uh, these uh, things uh, separately. We're just bringing this to your attention because it's an issue that we are going to have to address quite uh, quickly and we've had to uh, report in the uh, LAMOSA 3 report to, to uh, the Land Claims Court. Um, so basically the, 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 the issue is that we should be operating as a commission in law and currently we're not operating as a commission in law. I think also the confusion, Chair, that um, uh, has, has um, probably been created is that over the years, if you look at the trajectory of the Commission, our relationship has been too close to the Department and is to a certain extent. 20, 2009, the, the Department almost swallowed the Commission, and which is why um, if you see the reporting of the de Department, They've got branch restitution that they report as part of a performance. And at the same time, you've got the commission, which has to report separately. We have done a, a full analysis, analysis and we are clear that if you look at the Restitution Act, the role of the commission is to receive, it's called uh, solicit, investigate, and recommend for settlement. That is the role of the commission. And then the role of branch restitution is to implement the settlement, the recommendation of the commission. Uh, I usually make an easy example of it as what the work of the, um, um, the commission that um, um, uh, I'll try and remember just now, but basically what, um, uh, if my team can just remind me, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, I'm not feeling well, Chair, so I'm trying the best that I, I can. You will um, hopefully excuse uh, my uh, slowing down at times. Um, the, uh, the, the work that was done by the Truth, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, what it did was that it, that it did the investigation on behalf of government, took the interviews, and made recommendations to the Department of Justice. It did not implement the recommendations. And as you are aware, some of the re recommendations are still being dealt with. So if you then compare that role of, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to the role of the commission, that is in fact in law what the commission should be doing. It should be investigating these claims that it has received and then recommending the, the, the position that should be taken because at the end of the day, the person who's given the delegation to deal with restitution is the minister. And the mandate of the minister is to ensure sustainable settlements of the restitution um, uh, uh, claims. And so that's why the separation of the commission versus the restitution branch, which would be a branch in the department, we should be implementing the recommendation that has been made by the commission. So as it stands, that is the 
strict interpretation of what the restitution commission should be doing in terms of the act. Uh, but that is work that is still in pro pro progress that we are dealing with and we're talking to um, the various uh, um, institutions uh, to try and, and resolve those issues. We've also sought the opinion of the, of the, um, uh, the office of, of, of the, uh, apologies chair, the, 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 the state attorney's office has already assisted, assisted us with an opinion. And they are also confirming that in order for us to be able to comply, we need to set ourselves up as a schedule three public entity that is able to, uh, to be able to fulfill the mandate. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is just uh, one of the key challenges, which I won't go into too much detail. Um, our budget uh, this financial year uh, has been reduced uh, by 400 uh, million uh, because of uh, the, the COVID interventions. And um, that um, last paragraph just gives you a breakdown of what is left currently uh, in terms of the household budget. And again, remember that this is a, a report that we're giving to the land claims court. Next slide. Uh, we have uh, serious uh, challenges in, in as far as um, human resource capacity. Um, at some point in time, uh, when we were the under the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, um, the total number of uh, posts that were confirmed in the version 2.9 was supposed to be 1,544. Uh, that is the, the, the structure of the commission. Uh, but as we sit, we currently only have 699 staff members, which is at 45% of the capacity. And um, what uh, complicates matters even further is that the new department, um, there's the, the unfunded posts have been withdrawn, which means that we're sitting currently with a structure that says that we have 777 uh, people. And if you think about what I said earlier, that you are dealing with the capacity of the commission as defined in law, which is to receive, investigate and recommend, and as well as the capacity of the branch institution, which is supposed to effect the recommendation of the commission so that uh, uh, the last cent or the land has been transferred. So it is becoming a, a huge issue, uh, but we are uh, consulting with the, with the a DG and the minister in terms of how we can possibly deal with this issue. Next slide. Um, some of the issues I've already dealt with, um, we've identified research gazetting as a challenge. And so the recommendation is that we've set up a, a provincial research units um, to be able to deal uh, with the outstanding research that has been identified and we've targeted mostly the provinces that have the highest number of outstanding claims being KZN, Umalanga and Limbopo. And uh, also we've set up a, a, a national research unit, which um, deals, uh, leads the, the, the research strategy and we've appointed the research manager to be able to oversee the work. Next slide. And for valuations, we have, uh, as I've already indicated, have signed as SLA with the Office of the Valuer General, but we're continuing to engage them and the Director General for uh, better efficiencies uh, in terms of how we uh, can deal with, with the, the, um, the challenges there. And um, the, the settlement, uh, we are engaging on um, ensuring that our APP target is in line. And also we have um, proposed settlement models that will specifically be able to target various sectors because as the commission will be aware chair that we deal with different sec sectors whether it's agriculture tourism mining and others so we're proposing that we um, uh, strengthen our settlement model so that we're able to uh, deal with the work i'm almost done chair. Um, and next slide and uh, this is the proposed structure uh, and that seeks to um, um, ensure that we comply with the legislation that says that we are commissioning law. As indicated, we are proposing a 3A public entity, which separates the work of the commission. We're proposing that the commission has a DLCC and four 
um, regional uh, land claims commissioners. And then we are proposing that the restitution branch has a chief executive officer and the work that happens in the provinces. Um, it's explained in the next slide, but I won't go into it. Next slide. Next slide. Um, again, I won't go into this one. This is the mandate of the commission versus that of the department, which I've spoken about, uh, that talks to also the issue of post settlement. Uh, but the commission's work is uh, to investigate and make recommendations. And then Kim's court also asked us uh, to refer all matters that uh, are not going to be resolved through section 42 D. Uh, to court so that the court can then um, deal with those matters separately. Uh, uh, next slide. So that's the next one. Can we conclude? Uh, yes, so this is just the total of, of a number of claims uh, that have been uh, uh, sent to the uh, uh, land claims court for, for adjudication. These are matters that cannot be uh, uh, resolved administratively. I think the other ones just give a further detail of that. So I will end there. And uh, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you, Mamu uh, Koboto. I hope we have not strained you much, uh, but you seem to have gotten through the presentation. Yeah. Uh, honorable members, there's uh, the presentation and the briefing from uh, the Commissioner, Mamu Koboto, the Land Claims Commission. We will now open up uh, for questions. Please be very specific and direct because we only have 20 minutes to pose questions and then be able to afford the Commissioner 30 minutes to respond to the questions. Honorable Clapper. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. Let me appreciate the report by Mayor Gobodo. Chair, my concern here is the time is taking, the commission is taking to resolve or to settle the claims. Looking at the annual targets, it might take the commission 10 to 15 years to settle the, ba the balance of all these cases. And uh, <clears throat> we must also not lose sight for the fact that uh, the new uh, cases are put on hold. Do we need 30 years really to settle claims of people who's been waiting for all these years? Hence, when you go around communities, you find even where they are starting to resettle now. The first claimants are even dead. What is it that the commission can do to fast track this? I have looked at the uh, uh, challenges and issues that they are trying to do, but I don't get the gist check. Issues of capacity. What will it take the commission to say we are capacitated to fast track these claims? They are talking about uh, research. And when you look at uh, the stages where these claims are, they are still on the researching stage and gazetting and everything. And their research takes over three years. For what do we need really to do to fast track this so that our people are able to derive the benefits out of this? My worry is that those that are still new are still on hold. And this one will take us 15 years. The issue of the Office of Valua General they, the commission indicates that they have signed an SLA. When was it signed? And do they see any change in terms of uh, uh, acceleration of their work or evaluation of uh, the, uh, their claims? Honorable uh, Stein has alluded to the incapacity and which is perpetual, which is perpetual in the office of the Valua General. I just wanna, check with commission for how is this helping them. The external agent that has been appointed, all provincial statistics for report has not been verified still. Is there a reason why? You look at the autonomy that has been presented 
it has to take about three years from 2017-18. They are and still on the road to autonomy. Still on the road to autonomy. Do you have time frames? When will you be at least autonomous? The last one is that has the minister approved your proposed structure for, for this autonomy, the road to autonomy as the commission? Thanks. Thank you, Honorable State. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for, for the presentation, Chair. Um, I think, as the Honourable um, Member before me said, I'm really concerned about this, Chairperson. I would like to find out if, if it's possible for us to get a, maybe a summary of the 374 matters that was sent to the um, land courts uh, uh, to be settled, to just get some kind of indication, Chapers, and why so many cases is in the land courts currently. Uh, what is the reason for that? Um, because it could be that um, I see one of the issues that was identified as part of Project Kuyasa was policy gaps. So it might be that the reason for so many issues that is struggling and, and, and being held up in courts is because of policy and the implementation and the way it is. So Chairperson, maybe it's some way we could assist because as the portfolio committee, we are usually involved in making legislation, but when it becomes policy, the policy is sometimes changed in and implemented in ways that um, could be, um, against what legislation says, and that could be part of the problem that we can't finalize this. Chairperson, and then we also saw that at some stage, uh, service providers were appointed to assist with research. Do we still have service providers appointed and what is the, the role of them? If we don't have service providers currently, um, did they assist the department or not? Then, Chairperson, I would also like to find out, we've just discussed it with the Labour tenants, do we have a database of all the claims so that when uh, we don't have to be uh, asked by a court again at one stage to have a, a proper database in place? Then, Chairperson, I would uh, like to find out, I asked a, a, a question to the Minister sometimes last year. If a uh, land claim has been gazetted, it's been researched and it's found not valid. Whether the, the commission sends a letter to a farmer to say that your land claim was not valid because it poses massive problems to uh, farm owners. If there was a land claim on the land and they Please cannot conclude. now proceed uh, to, due to um, legislation. And the last question, can I just be uh, get clarity on the reasons for not the, not filling the moratorium? Um, it was said the minister, but I want to know if it's got to do with um, national treasury or what the reasons. And then, sorry, chair, I want to ex understand the explanation of verified by the external audit. What does that mean? Thank you, chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Matthias. Honorable Th Matthias. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm your guest, uh, Honorable Chair. Listen to Honorable Tape when she asked about the capacity of the department or of the commission, rather, to carry out its mandate. You know, to ask that question, it is just as good as asking. Uh, why the sun rises from the east. Or it's just as good as the dark room. And the only way of lightening up the dark room than to cast darkness is to admit that this uh, process of land restitution has been a, 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 a tragic, tragic failure. And to expect the commission to do miracles is to is to change the goalpost. It has to operate within the limits of what is there in the legislation, especially in the constitution, section 25 of the constitution. Honorable Chair, if there was 
if there is any manna from heaven which was given on a silver platter to settlers, to white settlers in this country, is land, is, is land restitution, where it requires land to be acquired through what is called willing, willing seller, willing buyer, and compensate people who wrongfully and illegally and through violence and genocide took away uh, by means of force and legislation learn from our people. So that has to go, to, that has to stop. And until that we realize this is a catastrophic and tragic failure, we'll continue to shift goalposts and expect miracles from a commission. And the commission is shame Umam Kobot has to do what she has to do because it's choppy job. In the final analysis, it's choppy job. There's nothing that she can do. This process must be stopped because it's a waste of time it continues to massage the egos of the land settler. Can we conclude? It does, it does not provide fundamental and permanent solution to the land hunger of our people. So we're wasting time, Honorable Chair. And this has to, got to come to an end at one point or the other. Uh, Honorable Kappa. Tatu Kapa. He's not on the platform, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Marshall. Me Marshall. System kicked her out. She's not here. Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chairperson. I feel I've been covered by my colleague, Ms. Dane. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Briet. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I wanted to respond to Honorable Matiasa and say that his constant vilification um, and spewing of hatred is really not, not funny anymore. And, and I would really like him to, to refrain from his one-sided comments and opinions, um, as this is not the forum for that, but I would leave it at that, Chairperson. Um, I think to a large extent, I have been covered as well. I would maybe just like to know from the Land Claims Commissioner, um, my fear is also the, the fact of, of the time frame. Um, a lot of, of farmers who have claims out on their um, are out on their land and who are to a large extent of the new order claims are really in a bit of a you know a situation. What do they do? What don't they do? Do they sell? Don't they sell? Do they expand? Do they not? And um, so so I think it is is necessary. And I I really wish the land claims commissioner all all the best of luck with this. And um, but specifically, I had. A, a query with regard to a, a guy who has a claim on his land and who is willing to sell his land, um, who uh, quite a number of years ago actually contacted um, his provincial um, land claims commission and he has heard nothing in that regard. What is the, the commission's stance on this? Um, are they willing to, to look into um, the willing, willing buyer, willing seller, um, in terms of these specifically where there is a claim out, and to a person, I think that is that is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Priet. Dabezita Kosenko. Chairperson, yeah. I see he's struggling. He's struggling. On, on our group chat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Honorable Memashati. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, let me welcome the presentation by the Land Claims Commissioner. I've got three questions. One, uh, the SLA between the, um, the, the, the 
restitution as well with with OVG. I want to check because Chair, the presentation that is made today is not different, honestly, from the one that we've been having throughout the term of, of office since the sixth uh, parliament started. Uh, there isn't much of a, a difference in all honesty. And besides the fact that uh, between then and now, there's now an SLA that has been signed with OVG in terms of evaluations. I just want to find out from um, uh, the Land Claims Commissioner, what has this SLA changed uh, the relations and the processes in relations to them getting uh, valuations in as far as the limb claims are concerned because initially there was a concern about the time frame of the 18 months has this sla brought any changes in his in fast in the process secondly chair i want to check from um because you see this thing of autonomy is becoming a, a, a stand, stand alone item in as far as the presentation on the claim, land claims is concerned. That there is a general complaint about this matter. Now that is coming through the auditor general again is becoming a, a, a is been elevated. I just want to check between the department and, and the land claim commissioner as, or as, as, as a restitution, have you, managed to have a conversation with the ministry around these issues and whether this conversation what ha what has been the outcome of this particular conversation because chair in the last meeting when a uh, land claim commission came through to parliament to this portfolio committee to discuss this particular issue we asked them if you were to be autonomous today will you be able to be functional on they said no they were not ready now, this matter is coming up as if the department is the one that is not, does not want to let go of them. But at that point, they indicated that even if they were to be autonomous, they wouldn't be ready because they don't have capacity. Now, what that, I, I think we must not make this issue, um, it must not become a spin bomb, where today it comes through from this angle, tomorrow it comes through this particular angle. The department together with the Lincoln must have a conversation in terms of how this autonomy is going to work. If it's not working, why? If it's, it's supposed to work, how long will it will take and what needs to happen? Because Chair, even if a uh, land claims commission uh, restitution can be removed from the department, they don't have capacity, not only from a capital perspective, but from a human capital. The administrative processes are taking, uh, are, are being handled by the department. And let's speak about research capacity. Do they have the research capacity at this point in time? Looking at the financial and the fiscal policies of the of government, that government does not have necessary resources, Chair. So I want us to, to get clarity from them. Have we have a conversation around this matter with the ministry so that we get this thing out of the portfolio committee because it's coming through all the time. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Member Shadzi. Uh, Honorable Tate uh, Masipa. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Meko Boto, thank you for your presentation. Uh, we are here as members of this committee to help and to provide an oversight. Uh, what you're doing, we appreciate really very much. Uh, my questions are um, about four. The first one is um, just the lesson that you have learned from the Guyasa project. If you can share with us those lessons and uh, whether there is a need to improve going forward. You did indicate that uh, there were policy gaps, you know, that were identified through this Guyasa. Can you share with us those policy gaps and uh, what you do in terms of addressing them uh, to ensure that uh, uh, they don't uh, really in, in, inhibit us from moving forward speedily. Um, I think there is an agent, external agent that you have appointed to verify the data, the data that you have got with regards to this uh, uh, land claims. 
Uh, can you indicate to us um, how the appointment of this external agent uh, was made and, um, and uh, what has been done since the appointment of this uh, external agent? The last one is um, you do indicate that there will be a 74% uh, turnaround uh, time reduction in terms of uh, the work that you are doing. What is the capacity situation with regards to um, uh, your department in ensuring that uh, this 74% turnaround time is met? Thank you very much. Eh? Thank you, Honorable Masipa, the Honorable Ntate Muntuit. Now, I want to, I had Honorable Tape when she started talking quite, I had her clearly what she was actually saying. It's a serious concern also on my side, Chair. I want to check from the side of the department, uh, what informs the department, what informs the commissions Actually, what informs the commission's annual target? Because you have got about 8,700 outstanding claims. And per year, you have given yourself an annual target of 479. How are you saying, how many more years will it take you to com finally complete the claims? Bearing in mind, Chair, that there are also claims that are interdicted by the court. They normally call it as the new order claims that are not yet, uh, the department has not yet started to process. So if you are having a target of 479 per year uh, and there are 8,700 outstanding, you are likely to finish and settle off those claims as matter per said in the next 25 to 30 years which is a very, very serious concern that how, what recourse does a person who lost a claim uh, five, 10 years back, does that person get when you get to settle the claim when that person is no longer living, when, when is the person is dead? The person died without having restored their own uh, ancestral land. So it's a serious concern, Che. That issue that I think it must actually be taken into. I want to ask Meg about it to say, Meg, have you ever presented a business case to the department to then say, if we do this, we are likely to settle claims after this period. If we do this, we are going to lessen. Have you ever presented business case that seek to lessen the number of years that it would take your department from actually finalizing all of these claims, Jay? The other question, Chair, is that Ketsana Mupine ya chene ki buanga yon. Khoreng, how far is the department, how far is this uh, uh, commission? How far is it from operating the commission in line with the act, the, uh, the establishment? We can't afford to still have the commission that still operates as program three of the department. Is there the will? Because at one meeting, the DG and the minister said, the former DG in that day, uh, 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 not Mlengan, that they do Shaban, said that pro processes are in place to have the commission operating in terms of its establishment. Because you're operating as an illegal, you are in a legal, your operation is illegal at this point in time, because I'm not seeing anything, Jay, that seems to suggest that the commission is moving towards operating in terms of the act of its establishment. Now, uh, the challenge, another thing, Chair, is that uh, does the, do, do you think the commission uh, has the capacity uh, to actually restore the autonomy of the commission and taking into account that the very same commission has failed to present or table its strategic plan and its APP chain. It's a very, very serious concern. I just want to focus on those two questions because on those three questions, because I think they will be able to assist us in changing the landscape of how people are actually seeing the work of this commission. It's a pity that I have to say all of these things that I'm saying 
when the commission is under the capable leadership of a woman. Uh, but I had, I had to say them, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Montredi. Honorable members, is the honorable member who wish to pose a question I have not been able to recognize? Mr. Marshall here. Go ahead, Honorable Marshall. You were recognized earlier and you are not on the platform. Please go ahead. Sorry, Chair. It's because of the, the network challenges that I have on my side. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I really appreciate your recognition. Yes, uh, my, 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 my take and my input will be that uh, we also uh, like to take this opportunity and appreciate uh, the presentation made by the commission. Uh, that uh, the most important thing that I think uh, it should be done is to work together with the department as Mema Tlazel has already uh, said. Honorable Matlas has already mentioned that we think it's for them to strengthen that. But also working together, it will then help the, 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 the commission to define a, a clear organizational mandate in line with the processes and support by the appropriate structures. Uh, I think those structures as the committee definitely show would like to know who are those structures so that when we do our oversight, we can be able to know where to go and ask questions when need arise. The other thing that one would also like to uh, 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 speak on is the issue of the, 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 the improvement of stakeholder management communication uh, channels. Uh, as we are coming from rural areas, uh, honorable chair, you re you'll remember that uh, <clears throat> people in rural areas, normally they don't get the information. So maybe as the committee, I think it will be very, very, very important for us to understand how those channels are going to be, you know, outlined and we look like to see them uh, in paper so that we can be able to assist the commission to succeed in their mandate. And then the lastly, lastly uh, Chairperson, uh, I'm not going to dwell much on issues that has already been said by other members. But I think uh, the most important thing is for this commission to move away from uh, going back to things that have been uh, reported to us before and then uh, come back with them again and again and again, like as if they are working in isolation with the department. Adequately, we would like to see the process under claims uh, going smoothly as is part of our work as the agricultural committee, which we are now talking about uh, repealing some of the section of the acts, which we want to see this issue of land matters being addressed in full. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Memasho. Uh, Mamu Koboto, let us uh, welcome and appreciate uh, your presentation uh, from the Lens Claim Commission. But this third uh, report uh, to the Land Claims uh, Court made on the 18th of November, 2020. Uh, but the statistics provided for the number of outstanding claims is as of the 1st of July, 2020 and not of the 1st of October, 2020, as expected. Can the Commissioner Umamu Koboto explain the reasons for this? Second one would be on the breakdown of the outstanding claims on slide five of the presentation, which shows that the majority of outstanding claims is sitting in and around 44%. Uh, we still at the research and gazetting stage. This is of great concern because it means that most of these claims are at the beginning stage of the process, which might take uh, several years before the research is finalized. It should be noted that in terms of the Operation Pakisa Directive, honorable members, research of all outstanding claims should have been finalized in 2017-2018 which was confirmed during the presentation of the commission's annual report for 2016-2017.
can therefore the commission explain to the portfolio committee and its honorable members whether service providers whose work to assist the commission to with research was poor have been paid if so how can the commission pay for work that did not meet the quality standards it set for the service provider and the use of uh, service providers despite the appointment of the external agent to verify data all the provincial statistics have not been verified when was the external agent appointment and what has the agent done since their appointment while we appreciate honorable members that the turnaround times for processing of claims will be reduced by 74% our concern is whether the commission has adequate capacity to reduce the turnaround time as reported on the issue of autonomy of the commission which members have spoken on since 2017 to 2018 the commission's parliament uh, has often been briefed about road map towards autonomy to date this process is not completed if anything it appears that the commission is starting afresh Four years later the commission is developing the business case and preparing to submit the memo to cabinet about the road to autonomy plan in order to get approval from cabinet to start the process what are the real impediments to this process are the officials in the commission not interested in, in ensuring that the commission is autonomous as anticipated in the restitution of land rights act or mamukoboto should we have ourselves a timeline perhaps by the time we conclude the uh, financial year of 2020 2021 or even 2021 2022 we should then have a timeline of having achieved autonomy because at this rate my fear is that the sixth administration or even the sixth parliament which this portfolio committee is part of will not be able to realize autonomy if we don't set ourselves targets and dates to achieve this but of most concern is the issue of resolving of the current land claims that of pre 1998 which you have said there's about 7000 of them how much will it cost to fully settle these 7000 land claims and how much time will be required to settle all these land claims in your best analysis and evaluation is expropriation of land without compensation that government seeks to implement will it be able to fast track these impediments and challenges of settling these land claims thank you that is all from us mamukoboto you have 20 minutes uh, remaining to uh, respond to all the questions you may go ahead um uh, thank you very much chair uh, for the questions um i will attempt uh, to answer as um, much as possible and my team will assist where i have left anything up I think chair the important part though if I if you will allow me is to start by saying the invitation uh, for uh, us in this context was to present what we were placed before the land claims court and so the presentation as it stands is what we are reporting to the land claims court versus what we are reporting to the commission and um, the, the committee and I think that um 
Uh, secondly, if you look at the invitation, it says we must speak to what we've placed before the land claims court, and also we must report on project Guyas. We prepared two separate presentations, one which is the one that I presented where I am merely communicating what we have communicated to the land claims court as to where we are in terms of the processes that we are, we are undertaking. And then the second presentation which we sent through was a full detail on project we are giving the various uh, issues uh, around backlog reduction strategy, what we are proposing in terms of the, the 3A entity, the timelines, uh, legislative uh, amendments and the likes. So um, I think that the issue that is making it difficult for, for uh, the, the committee to understand our presentation is because this is uh, what we, we Hello. What we were, we were presenting is a point in time in terms of what we were placed before the, 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 the court and in summary, because we can't give everything. The presentation that we've sent to the portfolio committee on project Guyasa gives a full detail and is able to answer a lot of the questions that the committee is asking. And perhaps chair, I would request that we get an opportunity at some point to come and present Project Guyasa because a lot of the questions that are being asked have been answered there. Um, safe to say um, that um, the, uh, the, 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 the timelines, if I go to the questions, I'll try and answer some of them, is that uh, in the Project Guyasa, we give a breakdown of the timelines. We, we identify the actual provinces that are affected and how we intend to deal with them. Um, and uh, so it's difficult for me to answer ad hocly. Uh, it would be appreciated if we get an opportunity to actually present so that we give uh, the, com the committee what they need in terms of the, the detail. Uh, the, the issues with the, um, the capacity, again, we have indicated that we have challenges, serious challenges with, with capacity. And remember, because we are a branch in the, of the department, the department has a monitorium on uh, filling of posts, and uh, we are affected as well. We, we can't operate outside of the process. And right now, um, because of um, the uh, consolidation of the two departments into one, we have not been able to fill posts, uh, and that is a work in progress, but maybe Cindy will be able to give further information. Um, um, the, uh, in the roadmap to autonomy, again, we've got uh, a fully fledged proposal that is in, in place under the Guyasa, which um, talks to both the immediate and uh, the long term. And um, uh, it, uh, it will uh, require approval. So on the question of whether we want to be autonomous, we've always wanted to be autonomous. Uh, if I had my way, I could be autonomous tomorrow. But it doesn't help me to say I'm autonomous because in law, I am autonomous. But if I, as a commission who's supposed to investigate, uh, is operating with just three commissioners and the staff that is supporting me to just do the research work, I would be doing malicious compliance in the sense that I'm saying I'm autonomous, but the capacity that is associated to make me to be a viable entity is not there. Um, that is the challenge. Again, it's clearly articulated. I'm hoping that you have the presentation that I'm referring to, uh, although we have not had a chance to present it. Um, there are uh, claims that have been sent to the Land Claims Court, um, and these claims are claims that cannot be uh, settled uh, administratively, administratively in terms of Section 42D. This is where maybe the landowner is contesting the validity of the claim, or there's an issue where there is an, uh, a question of uh, the values that um, are offered to the landowner who decides that they are not agreeing to the price that you offer. Not hearing. You're not. Am I not audible? Yeah, now you're audible. There are challenges. Oh. You may proceed. 
So uh, the, the claims that are referred to the Land Claims Court are claims where we cannot settle them uh, administratively because the parties are not in agreement, whether it's the landowner um, contesting the validity of the claim or not happy with the offer that we place before them, or where there are competing claims and co commun communities are contesting the pe people we seek to give the land to. So those matters have to be determined by the Land Claims Court. Uh, which is why these matters are then referred to court. So uh, we can't then uh, finish those claims until the court has been able to uh, uh, adjudicate on those matters. We, we, we will make those, uh, the list available to, to the committee as per request. And uh, Usindi will deal with the question of the service providers. Uh, and again, uh, it's dealt with in the report that I was referring to. Uh, we do have a, the database of uh, claims that are outstanding. This, um, the Guiasa project, which is uh, part of the backlog reduction strategy that I spoke to, has helped us um, uh, audit our uh, statistics and actually look at each claim form. And we're saying that internally we've done the work, but now we are using wanting a service provider to help us audit because we've always in upfront about the fact that our statistics have not necessarily been 100% correct. We want to be able to ultimately in the end say that our stats have been confirmed externally so that we are able to give credence to the information that we've done. We've done a whole lot of work to get to where we are showing these are the numbers uh, because we've done our own internal audit, but we're also doing an external audit. Uh, there is um, a process that has been undertaken uh, around that. I've already spoken to the fact that uh, we can't fill posts uh, because of uh, the fact that we are in the department and the department currently has a monitorial. We are, however, however engaging with the DG who has uh, put up a team, a task team to assist us to try and unlock some of the issues that are, are, are urgent that need to be dealt with immediately. Um, The, the, the service providers that were appointed to help us with uh, research, unfortunately, uh, a lot of them did not assist us. Some of the, the, the work that came back from them was of poor standard, despite the standards that they were given in, uh, in terms of what the expectation was. Some of the research report comes back and it's not conclusive. And so uh, very often, if the matter is in court, we have to do further research. And so, again, if you look at the outstanding research, you're going to find that some of those issues are research that deals with uh, 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 work that was dealing with untraceable claimants, research that has to be uh, uh, redone because it, uh, the, the quality research that was done externally uh, was uh, not up to standard, or a situation where we are in court and the court requires further uh, research because uh, further issues still need to be dealt with. So that, that is an issue. Uh, we were uh, using external uh, service providers, some of them uh, universities who have uh, institutes that work uh, on uh, uh, with the universities. And unfortunately, Chair, um, we have uh, had very good cases and we've had very bad cases. The sign off is there, but if you read the research report, it is not really worth the paper that it's written on. Um, there are uh, processes that we have engaged to try and, and deal with that. And the contract um, or the process has now expired. As I'd already indicated, we have a plan now to try and uh, deal with the outstanding research uh, through a, a provincial uh, a research units and, uh, and will deal with both internal and external a capacity to try and resolve. Uh, again, we don't have the, the necessary capacity for us to be able to fast track the work that uh, we, we need to deal with. Um, the, the, the claimants, uh, the landowners who want to sell their land and are willing to sell, get engaged. We have various um, landowners who do offer their land to sell. And we still have to undertake uh, the process and ensure that the claim the land that is in question where the land owner is offering is under claim. And once it has been confirmed to be land that is under claim, we still have to do evaluation and the evaluation still has to be done by the Office of the Valuer General. 
And then again, we find that sometimes once the uh, value general makes an offer, which is not going to be based on, on market value, but has to be based on uh, the five principles that are in the constitution, some landowners then uh, decide that they're not willing to sell. And um, then that again becomes an issue for contestation in terms of the OVG pro, uh, processes, or the matter ends up uh, again being referred to court on the basis of the values uh, or what we refer to as compensation that would need to be, need to be dealt with. Um, the SLA with the OVG, to a certain extent is helping us in the sense that we're able to communicate and identify the gaps and um, uh, further on the, the OVG has allowed the department to assist in um, the advertising as for the procurement valuers to be able to help them in, in conducting the valuations. Uh, but uh, there's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done in order for us to be able to say that we are happy with the work of the Value General's Office. But uh, Chair, what is important to note again is that the VG's Office is an independent entity outside of the Commission and the, the best that we can do is to ask them to provide a service to us, but we can't wait how and when. Um, uh, it's an issue that we're raising we've raised with the DG and uh, he also is um, trying to assist us to find solutions there. Um, the lessons learned again around the Kuyasa um, chair uh, are in that presentation and I would appreciate it if I get an opportunity to actually uh, at some point present Kuyasa. Um, and um, again, uh, we said that 74% reduction can happen, but in order for us to be able to do that, we would need the requisite capacity. Um, in terms of the budget that is allocated uh, and the question that says, how long are we going to take to be able to settle the outstanding claims? If you look at the reporting to the portfolio committee and the annual reports over time, the commission has spent all of the budget that it gets allocated each year. And uh, uh, exactly because uh, the budget that we get allocated is not enough for us to be able to say we will target more than the number of claims that we've targeted. Before we had the Office of the Value General, we targeted around 800 to 1,000 claims for settlement. But uh, because of the Office of the Value General, uh, we had to reduce the number of targeted claims that we could settle each year because of we anticipating, we were anticipating the delays that are involved in us getting evaluation from the uh, uh, VG's office. And um, again, every year, we set a target for ourselves. And very often, if we don't have those challenges, we exceed the target and we spend our budget. But every year, we have to stop and not sign further settlement agreements. Because if we were to do that, we would overcommit the state. We've got about 2.3 billion allocated in household for us to acquire land or pay financial compensation. And every year we finish that money. So that tells you that if I were to decide that I'm going to settle a thousand claims this financial year, when my budget is still 2.3 billion household. I would overcommit the state to money that I don't have. So I have to make sure that I, I finish the allocation that is given to me for that year, and I wait for the next allocation and then move to process the claims that is there. So again, the Kuyasa project gives a, a full detail of what we are looking at if we were to say fast track. So for me, Chair, it's a very important that when we talk to fast tracking the settlement of the claims, we understand what we mean in the context of um, the business processes, the human resource, the budget allocated. Because if we don't have all of those, we can't say we're going to fast track the settlement of claims. We have to have all of that capacity, human resource, the budget related, uh, improve our business process. And, and the likes, and then we can say that uh, the 74% reduction is going to be meaningful. 
Um, the new order claims uh, 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 are claims lodged in law in terms of uh, uh, the, the court order, but we can't deal with those claims until there is new legislation that has been put in place. Uh, as functionaries, we can only implement uh, or introduce new legislation once we've been gui guided about when and where the new legislation should be um, uh, introduced. But as it stands, uh, we can only focus on the old order claims. Um, again, the breakdown of the outstanding stats as already requested is available in the in the in, in the Uyasa report, which I will present and be able to give a detail. And you can see, uh, Chair, I'm repeating myself on in the context that a lot of the questions are, are in that and that presentation. Uh, we don't seek to give the portfolio committee the same information that we gave then, but we are giving this information to the land claims court and not the portfolio committee. The portfolio committee's uh, report is the one that deals with uh, Guyasa, uh, which gives an update of where we are since our last presentation. Uh, expropriation uh, uh, is an issue that we, we, we deal with in terms of um, uh, the 42E of the, of, of the Restitution Act, and it allows um, the, uh, the Restitution Act section 42E allows us to expropriate, but we have to expropriate using section 25.3 of the Constitution, uh, looking at uh, PAJA and uh, the Office of the Value General. So uh, we still have to deal with the Expropriation Act of 1975, and so we do not have the capacity to deal with expropriation with nil compensation, which is why we are also then waiting for the committee of parliament to then um, uh, finalize its work. And if that is an opportunity, then it will allow us to be able to process more claims in the context that we would not have to deal with the budget issue that we're currently dealing with, because we can only settle claims based on the budget that's allocated. Chair, I think uh, to conclude. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Mamu Koboto and uh, the, the entire Land Claims Commission team that has uh, been in attendance and uh, uh, have given uh, uh, support to this presentation. We are very much aware, Mamu Koboto, that we didn't have an opportunity to tackle the Kuyasa uh, presentation. We uh, will uh, do a special application uh, for a sitting this Friday between 9 and 12 to Parliament. If we are granted, we will then schedule uh, that presentation for this coming Friday, Honourable Members. Let me uh, afford uh, uh, the executive, the Honorable uh, Deputy Minister Squatcher and the Honorable Deputy Minister Zamini to uh, give closing remarks. Mao Squatcher. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, and uh, our honorable members of parliament. Order Chair, can Honorable Squatcher reveal himself? Thank you, Honorable Montuedi. You uh, just beat me to it. Uh, go ahead, Honorable Squatcher, please switch on your video. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to say I'm not well dressed. I am. <laughs> Can you now see me, Chair? Yes, uh, we see your beautiful shirt. If you can lower the screen a bit, we can be able to see you. Am I there? No, you are showing us your beautiful but, shirt. But Chair, Honorable Squatcher must look in the phone if his face is appearing properly. He can't be asking no, us that. No, no, Honorable Montredi, I'm chairing the meeting. I don't need your assistance, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Honorable you know, Since Honorable Montredi, 
since Honorable Montoyedi lost some of his hair, he's really become chaotic. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and uh, Honorable Members. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the committee for this robust two hour engagement. I think, Chair, the, such engagements serve only to strengthen our resolve to serve the people of South Africa. In the course of our work, there are gaps, there are limitations. We tremble and we fawn. And so the committee is there to make sure that it plays this oversight so that we're able to take in a positive spirit whatever is raised here in taking forward the cause of our people. So we greatly and muchly appreciate, especially the, 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 the engagements of today because they deal with really the downtrodden of our people. We also consider that some of the issues are so mammoth, they even border at the level of policy. And I think that uh, with your support, we'll be able to go forward. And once again, thank you very much, Chakasi. Thank you, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister Squatcha. The Honorable Deputy Minister Zamini. Uh, the, I mean, uh, Chairperson, thanks very much. Uh, I wasn't going to uh, come in because uh, Deputy Minister Squatcha have spoken and expressed uh, what I would have uh, expressed and indeed thanking all of you, thanking our officials and thanking uh, the members of parliament for the support you are continuing to give us. And thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Deputy Minister Baud Lamini, Sibalku. Honorable yes. members, let me thank you for having uh, been able to attend uh, this uh, meeting of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture land reform and rural development. We would like to also thank uh, the executive, the minister and the deputy minister for availing them as Zuma Mumbabama was already missing them and engaging with them. We thank uh, the DG, acting DG Ntate Ramasodi and the officials of the department for having uh, been able to avail yourself and uh, for the briefing that you uh, gave to the honorable members. Also, we would like to uh, uh, highly appreciate uh, the input from the commissioner, Umamu Koboto, and the work that the Land Claims Commission is doing in ensuring that uh, uh, the justice and dignity of our people is restored. Honorable members, that brings us uh, to the end of our uh, uh, meeting and uh, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank we will be much. having plenary at two o'clock. So please, honorable members, log in at half past one so that we don't have a challenge by two o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Hey, Mundo, you also got this summer.